some point or another, most home mechanics want to own some form of an impact tool to help remove stubborn bolts. There's many choices out on the market, and today I'm going to walk you through the ones that I have and hopefully help you make a decision for your shop if you're in the market for one of these labor savers. I know many mechanics that only want to use ratchets or breaker bars when they're working on equipment. But even those people will tell you that a good impact tool can really help out when a bolt is rusty or maybe it's got a lot of Loctite that you can't heat up. An impact tool works by storing rotational energy and then releasing it all in one high torque blast that helps to incrementally move that bolt or fastener a little bit at a time. They really are effective and they're a good tool to have in your toolbox. Once you've decided that you need or want some impact tools in your shop, there's a few decisions that you have to make. The first of which is what type of impact tool do you want? Do you want manual tools? Do you want electric powered tools? Or do you want the more traditional air powered tools? Each one of these has advantages and disadvantages. So why don't we take a look at them right now? Manual impact tools are by far the best value out there for you. The cheapest of which is this, a coal chisel or a center punch that you probably already have in your toolbox. Now you place this on the head of the fastener that's rusty and give it some good strikes with a hammer and oftentimes that's enough to break the adhesion of the rust and corrosion that's holding that fastener in place and it allows you to use a breaker bar to back that out. Stepping up from the center punch is this thing and this is what's known as a manual impact driver. I've owned one of these things probably since the mid 1980s and my first Honda 50 mini bike. The way these tools work is there is an internal ramp system on these. So you hold it against the fastener and then hit it with your hammer. As the main body of the tool is driven in, it rotates the tip, thus loosening your, loosening your fastener. Now these are really inexpensive, they're very portable, and they usually come with an assortment of screwdriver tips for all kinds of Phillips and flathead fasteners. And they work really well for those, especially if the fastener's been cammed out. The fact that you're actually pushing in as it turns keeps the screw tip bit locked right inside the fastener. One of the features I like about this is that adapter comes off and any half inch drive socket fits right onto that thing, allowing you to use it for larger nuts and bolts on your motorcycle or car. Now again, there's some real good pros to this. They're cheap, they're portable, they can produce a fair amount of torque, but on the negative side, they're pretty slow. You really have to reset it every time you hit it, and long, large bolts may take a lot of time and a lot of sweat equity to get the fastener off. So they're a great option if you don't want to use impact tools a lot, or if you want to keep one in your toolbox for portability, but for general shop use, mine pretty much stays in the tool drawer. If your shop already has compressed air available to it in high enough quantities, an air powered impact wrench might be the right choice for you. Now these have been the workhorse of both industrial, professional mechanics and home mechanics for years, and they still are a great tool. One of the values of these is they are relatively inexpensive to buy a home unit. I've seen them as cheap as $30, but you can certainly find a good one on sale under $100. The advantage to these is these small packages, even like this stubby here, can put out upwards of 300 foot pounds if you buy a good gun. This one actually has adjustable um, impact settings, including reverse, and the the actual trigger is variable speed on it. So you have a lot of options when it comes to tightening or loosening nuts and bolts. The disadvantage, of course, to air powered tools is A, you have to have a compressor that can keep up with the volume requirements for air of these tools. They're pretty power hungry when it comes to air volume. 
They tend to be heavy because they're made out of uh, all metal often like this one. They need daily oiling so they get to be a little bit messy and you're always dragging an air hose through your shop when you're using these things. So they can be a little bit cumbersome. But in terms of power per dollar, these are still a good option if you have an air compressor that can run one. The home mechanic has always had the ability to use a corded electric impact wrench, but they really were not all that powerful. They were large and they were clunky and you still had a cord to drag around similar to an air powered tool. Cordless drivers came on the market probably about 20 years ago and they came in the form like this. This was really designed to drive screws into decking or, or framing and they're super effective. But at some point someone figured out you could put an adapter in here and drive sockets with it. Now these are a great option for a small shop like mine where I work primarily on skidoos and uh, motorcycles like my DR back there. They put out enough but not too much torque that you'll tear screws apart and they're small enough now that they can get in and out of places. This is an actual battery powered impact wrench, not a driver like this one. It's built specifically to drive sockets. Now this one and this, they're both 12 volt systems from Milwaukee, but I'll tell you, this little stubby guy right here will drive half inch sockets to about 250 foot pounds. It'll even spin the lug nuts off my truck without any problem at all. Now I have both of these in my shop all the time. This one for heavier duty work and this one for most of the work that I do. It's less money than this one. It's more versatile and uh, I don't strip bolt heads off like I do with this one. These battery powered tools do have a lot of advantages over the manual and air powered units that we've looked at. Probably the number one advantage is portability. There's no hoses, there's no cords, you just pick it up and away you go. And the lithium ion technology of most companies nowadays means these things run for hours, not minutes like the old NICAD batteries used to. These are relatively light, they're quiet compared to the air compressor that would be running in your ear if you were using it. And if you already have a manufacturer that you already use, like Milwaukee or DeWalt, where you maybe have some woodworking tools, well, the batteries will fit right into these and uh, give you some extra use for those battery packs. Disadvantages of these tools, of course, are cost. If you don't already have a system like this at home, say for your wood shop, that means you're gonna to have to buy batteries, chargers, and tools. And that can add up to a tremendous amount of money. This tool alone without a battery is around $200 Canadian. And this one here, sometimes you can find on sale for $100, but that doesn't include batteries. When you start adding a couple of batteries and a charger, these two tools can be worth close to $500. So you need to kind of think about things, whether or not this is the right tool or air is the right tool or manual is the right tool. But I will tell you, these are really, really handy. I know there are some people out there who are gonna call me out for using chrome sockets on an impact wrench or even an impact driver. The reality is, impact sockets are designed for this type of work. They're much more robust and you can actually see if you compare the 7.8 sockets, the chrome and the impact socket, you'll see that the impact has a much thicker wall. But that's not where it ends. Impact sockets are actually made out of different materials and hardened differently than standard chrome sockets. This makes them more ductile more absorbent of impacts without actually fracturing the socket. Now I've been using chrome sockets for a long time with my impact drivers and impact wrenches and I've never had a problem and I know some mechanics that will tell you that there's really no difference. But most good mechanics will tell you these chrome sockets are designed to be used with a ratchet or a breaker bar. 
the thinner wall allows them to sneak into spots that sometimes that thicker socket can't get to, but more importantly, they're hardened so they're really, really strong. The downside of these is they're not as impact resistant, meaning that if you use these in an impact gun, you run the risk of breaking, actually cracking the socket and making it useless. So that's a little bit of information about impact sockets versus standard sockets. The choice really is going to be up to you, but this really is the right choice. Don't let anybody tell you any different. That wraps up today's Tinker Tool Time video on impact drivers and impact wrenches. I hope you found it useful, and if you did, you can always like the video, and you might even want to subscribe. It lets me know what people are interested in. Now this definitely was not a, a, a in-depth dive. It was a really high-level look at these types of tools, but if you like, I could talk about why I chose 12 volt and not 18 volt in the shed here in another video. So let me know if you want to hear my rationale for 12 volt power tools. Until then, I've got a few more things that I have to do here in the shop. I hope to see you soon here on Tinker Tool Time. Catch you later. Bye for now.